This video is the first of a series titled Goris's Water Box Providing Solutions to World Problems. Peter Hoff, a former lily breeder, grower, and exporter from Holland, invented the water box for a number of reasons. To reverse desertification and restore disturbed and eroded land to generate food for the malnourished and starving population, to provide work and an income for the poor and destitute, to turn around the migration from rural areas to urban slums, to improve biodiversity, and, last but not least, to unbind carbon from the atmosphere. All this is done sustainably without tapping or depleting the groundwater levels by way of organic farming methods and without the use of electricity. Please enjoy part one of our conversation. Peter, Gode Middag to you in the Netherlands, in Holland. Hello, Mila. Thank you for calling me. My pleasure. Holland, the land of wholeness, it has been called, and a country, as you know, I love, and to which I have a strong connection through part of my family. Um, you are about to take a trip to 16 countries, or you're already on your way um, in the world, to help people plant with the use of your invention, the water box. And I'm thrilled about your tremendous progress and success since we last met. I mean, you had already advanced so far, and now it's just, you know, it's just grown from there. And I'm so excited to be talking with you again. Way to go, Peter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you're so welcome. I know what, what hard work it had been all the way. Um, for the benefit of our viewers or listeners, could you please tell us a little bit of your background and explain to us what led you to your invention of the water box or groesis and to then subsequently establishing your company, Aqua Pro or Water Management Solutions? All right. Well, my background uh, is actually I have followed the study of weeding. So uh, professionally, I've always been in the weeding of uh, flowers, especially lilies and uh, color. Yes. Uh, besides that, uh, we had a, a company producing seed potatoes, uh, tulips, we produced uh, seeds for uh, vegetables. I produced flowers uh, 17 years in Ecuador for sale to the United States. And actually, a big part of my work was traveling around the world, selling my product. And uh, we had an export to about 50 countries. And while traveling to my client, uh, I uh, found out, because in Holland we don't do it, that uh, most countries where it is warm and dry and hot, people use drip irrigation. Right. And uh, drip irrigation is actually a kind of sniper. It, it looks like a drip, but it is an eternal drip, so actually the water use is uh, extremely high. Give you an, an idea, in Chile I was in a, in an area where they planted uh, uh, avocado, avocado uh, in English, and they use 5 million liters per hectare per year. So that's what you talk about with drip irrigation. A big part of drip irrigation is also separating, put it on top of the ground, which part is very hot. And uh, so actually without seeing it, 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 actually, it, it would be cold from one moment to another, you would see smoke. So, uh, well, I, I got worried about it, all my clients were telling me that uh, in their uh, area, the water level dropped. Some yes. very fast. A country like Syria, for instance, the last 10 years, the water level has dropped 200 meters. In Syria? Yeah, which is 600 feet. And um, so I really got worried about it. Now, I had a very uh, good group of clients in the South Italy, and I drove uh, monthly from Rome to Napoli, where a side of the highway near Cassetta, all the hills are eroded, oh. no anymore, although Italy is very fertile. But because all the sound soil has eroded, and it's now pure rock, nothing grows there anymore. So, oh my gosh. therefore, I was kind of thinking, how can we solve that? 
Now, because of the fact that we had seen potatoes, I was used to work very early in the morning, walking through the seed potatoes, taking out virus plants, because when it's sunny, you can see them. And then uh, you get wet until uh, the middle of your body, because of you. So I was actually known with the fact, you know, because of experiences, that there's so much water in the air. And once, while I was driving there near Caseta, I got the idea, why don't we actually make water from air instead of pulling it from the ground? And then in 2003, I became 50, and I decided, and because you read about the problem of the world, hunger, education, and I, I actually thought by myself, you know, nobody has a solution that you have a good idea. Why don't you go and start to work on it because it must be solved, that problem. So I sold my company, I got some money because of that, and it gave me the possibility to dedicate myself. We were with three persons, and I worked since 2003, I worked full time on it. So it's now the ninth year. So in Italy, you got the inspiration to capture the condensation from the air so that it doesn't go to waste. And yeah. then uh, uh, your background was this tremendous world travel from your previous business uh, as a lily breeder, grower, and exporter. And you observed and your clients told you that the um, uh, irrigation water that they've been using for centuries was the, the water table, the groundwater table, was slowly reducing because there's this incredible waste uh, due to um, evaporation of um, the, through the drip irrigation system. Wow. Okay. We hope you enjoyed part one of the series, Grace's Water Box, Providing Solutions to World Problems. If you'd like to review and support Peter's work, please take a look at the information provided in the description section below the video. Thank you.